Alright, this is the last roll of January, red January, roll every day. I'm calling this one the final boss. This is uh, Andy. He's one of the instructors at Freeform. And we're just getting in the last roll. Uh, it's February 1st, but I wanted to get in the last roll with Andy. And I didn't come in Tuesday, so Andy's not there. At any rate, what we're doing here is... Um, I'm going to slow this down in a little bit because there's some grip grip exchanges here that I want to kind of go over. So you'll see Andy get this knee shield where he's keeping me from pressuring into him. He keeps his left leg uh, on my chest. And when, what I want to do is I, um, I, I have an underhook right now. And I was thinking about pulling him up onto his back and then he just put that knee shield back in again. So now what I'm looking to do is take my right hand, take my left hand and feed my left hand to my right hand and then come up and then step around. But Andy is working some grips here, decides he's gonna grab my sleeve and then he gets this lasso, grabs my pant and dumps me over really nice and gently. So as we go back into exchange in here, I decide I'm gonna kick through and try to come up which was a bad idea because there was no plata. I posture up. Um, and then here, as I'm in this position, um, I'm flat on my knees. And I start to realize this is not a very good position where my feet are flat like this. So I decide to get a knee up the middle and um, try to free my right hand that he had the cuff on. Uh, as we, as I was thinking about stack passing him here, actually. Um, but as I'm getting low, he has my uh, sleeve again and a shallow lasso. And so I'm going to work to my feet and, and start to pass to the one side. But he closes up grip and gets closed guard on me. I can feel that right hand on my left pant. And I was thinking about taking his lapel and, and putting it over his arm and trapping it. But I put, put my right foot up just so he didn't dump me over to that side. Here I'm trying to get a two-on-one. I get a two-on-one, I stand up, um, but I didn't recognize Andy had already changed grips with his right hand. Boom, and knocks me over. Uh, right now, Andy's doing a lot of uh, like counter attacks. He's taking what I give him and then just kind of reacting to those positions. Here I'm gonna overhook and possibly go into a Mikey Muzumeki kind of straight ankle. I need to push him back to get my left foot on his right hamstring. Right there I did it. But Andy will break some grips and then he's gonna hop my my left foot that's on his hamstring so now I really don't have any kind of control over that leg. And um, I feel like I'm losing it so I grab his leg to kind of reset it again. I'm gonna go back to it, but I just can't get my left leg free. You see, he's got his uh, his left leg controlling mine. So I decide at this point, I'm gonna push him back with my right foot, but then I get worried about um, an esteem lock when I felt that right hand come in. So I decide from here, I might try to pull that leg and go into a knee bar, but he pull, retracts that leg back, and then he steps over, and we get into a neat little position here. Let's rewind that where uh, the bad position here is I'm facing one direction. So as he steps over, comes back and refaces me, my whole body is facing one direction, which allows him to take my back pretty easily. That's a bad mistake on my part. Um, Andy here went for a back take, I hopped the leg, and now we are in this position where I felt like he's, he was working an arm bar, but what I've done is uh, pushed my body over his left leg and the concern here now is he's isolating my right arm and I can start to feel it uh, being straightened and at this point he kind of bridges back comes up on his elbow and pushes over his hip into this kind of monoplata position and he gets the tap right there so um, I'm pretty much you know a goldfish in this in this round against a uh, so I go to take this back, he hops over my leg, 
I'm controlling a, a lapel and his le his uh, left hand. He comes over. I try to grab a crucifix, and I have the collar, but I can't. And I'm preventing him from connecting his hands. But he hips out to get his uh, right elbow to the mat, and then from here, he can bridge up on his elbow, come up back into me. Um, I realize I need to get off my flat back, and so I got to come into him a little bit. I was hoping to get a uh, half guard to work some guard positioning, but um, that didn't happen. I felt like there was a, a guillotine coming on, so I tried to off balance him in here. As soon as that hand came in, um, I tried to act like I was going to roll him to off balance him a little bit. Meanwhile, I was trying to step around him with my right leg to then roll him. But uh, Andy's keeping a really good position. He has great base with that right hand. Um, he did try to step in for that crucifix position. I saw that coming. Um, here is where I got concerned about a clock choke. Andy uh, had a grip on my, my cross collar, so I pulled that over to my other side. And then Andy grabbed my leg and just dumped me, tried to dump me over. At this point, I kind of square, he squared up with me. And then I kind of just turned to my left to unravel. Unravel a little bit and then sit back. We're getting short on time here, so I grab his lapel. We both look over at the clock, realize there's like eight seconds. And I just have him to come up, but he kicks back that right foot, prevent me getting that single leg. And then it's a little scramble ensues, and that's the end of Red January. Thanks, Andy.